right, y'all, we are in the home stretch with Optimize and Build, a highly engaging Facebook page. Over the break, we asked y'all to jump into the chat, provide us with some of your um, niches so that Rachel can show you how to do your, um, to your targeting, right? Yeah, find okay. your most active people. Because right. you don't want everyone, you want that audience who cannot resist your content and engages with you consistently. Perfect. So do you want to get started with some um, from the audience or from the live chat? Um, you already have some waiting from the live chat. So let's pull from the live chat first. All right, great. So the first one that we had from the live chat is, let me see. Santiago, men having their middle life crisis and ready to make a change. Okay, men for change. Okay. Okay, is he on right now? Can you ask him what kind of magazines they might read? Okay, and so the steps, once again, for those of you while we're getting ready, is you're gonna go to Audience Insights, add an interest or a topic to the left sidebar, check the activity tab, note the activity levels, click over to the page likes tab, research more pages, rinse and repeat. So we're gonna do this together now, and we're gonna go into our ad account. So here it is, I'm gonna go into my Audience Insights, so I'm going to that, I call it the hamburger, the, the three lines. We're gonna to go to the hamburger and then down to Audience Insights. And once we're in Audience Insights, we're gonna pick everyone that's on Facebook. And then we're going to go to the left sidebar where it says interest. And I'm gonna want an interest of somebody who's going through transition, um, men going through transition. Now there are a few um, men who are older or older than me in this audience right now. I'm 37, so it's not trying to be difficult here. Um, People in the audience, what kind of topics would you say would be interested to identify that person? GQ. GQ. GQ? Give me a couple of other ideas. GQ. Men's health. Road and track. Men's health. Okay. Now, is, is he in a health space or just old, older men's space? Um, Anyone else? Any other ideas? Golf, okay. Now let, we have to test these audiences so far. So we've got men's health, G, GQ, road and track. So we're gonna type them in here in the interest. So I'm gonna type in road and track first. See if I can pull them up. I'm not pulling up road and track, I'm bringing up Thomas and Friends. Maybe not that one. Road and track, there we go, I found them in the magazine. Now I want to, before I find out if the audience is a good one, I want to find out in this one the demographics. Do I actually have that age range that road and track has that age range of men? I don't know. Does it? So I go here and I see 21% of its audience is 35 to 45, and 18% of its audience is 45 to 54. So it's not heavily older people. So that's not the audience that I'm going to want to target. So that does not, that would not be one that I would use to begin looking here. So let's look up golf now. See if golf brings in more of an audience that is better for his people. So golf, <clears throat> now this is something where you want to interview your audience. Talk to your audience and find out what kind of things are they following at that age, in that bracket that you're trying to target with your content. So if I go to golf, I still see 21%, 17%. It doesn't seem overwhelmingly in one area other than the fact it is not women unless they're 35 to 44. So it's, you can see it's lower on the women level. So, okay, I'm gonna go now, it's not golf heavily. What else would be one? Let's see, um, GQ, oh, if I can type. Okay, here's GQ. Oops, not GQ Mexico. Butterfingers, let's try that again. Okay, GQ, okay, definitely don't wanna do GQ. Because GQ is heavily skewed to 25 to 34. So it's anything but that audience. So if you were going to target, you might want to exclude GQ. Mm. Investing. Yeah. <clears throat> Investing. Oh, okay. <clears throat> For some more uh, context, his service is a, 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 he provides them with a process to reframe, reframe their life meaning and self-image. Okay, so self-image for men, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to type in investment. And let's see here, it is more male than female, but at the older ages it gets equal. So you're gonna have to keep going to your audience and finding out what they want. Now let's say it is investment, let's stick with investment for the sake of, let's assume it's, it's a winner here that more men are investing. Then we can go over here and we're gonna switch it to be gender just men. And we're gonna switch it to be the age. 
and we're going to switch that to be the age range that we're looking for. So we're going to switch that to be, ah, sorry guys, this is a very fun mouse when you're not used to Apple mouses. Come on. Sorry, guys. Okie dokie here. A couple of other suggestions that came in. Christian Santiago's would be a Cigar Aficionado magazine. Ooh. Um, and then um, maybe for some uh, suggested people that uh, he, this person might follow would be like Tony Robbins or Dave Ramsey. Okay, Tony it's Robbins. investment. Okay, so we're going to test with Tony Robbins, and we're, we're going to start with investment, but then we're going to test with Cigar Magazine and Tony Robbins. Okay, so noticing here, you can see when I make it over 50, 50 and I make it men, this is who I would be targeting. It comes in active there. Now let's go up to the top and see about the activity levels. So we want to see activity levels for investment. <clears throat> so this is where I get out the good old pen and paper, and so that's why I said if you have a VA, this would be a good time to have them do this task for you. You would have them say, okay, what is the activity list? So we want to know post the post and then it'd be likes, comments, shares. So likes, comments, shares. And so this one is investing, right? <clears throat> okay. And we can see here that we've got 17 posts that are liked. And that they get um, 14 comments and three shares. Now let's combine that, compare that to Tony Robbins. Take off investment, and we're going to replace that with Tony Robbins. Real quick, the mouse has a little automatic scroll on, so if you touch it, the pop-up has to be like a... Ah, I'm, yeah. I'll try to, try to be careful with that then. Okay, Tony Robbins. There we go. Okay, here is Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins has 25, T.R. Robbins, okay. Tony Robbins has 25 posts that are liked. So if I had to choose between targeting Tony Robbins um, or targeting somebody else, you're gonna see that there's a lot more people that are um, following Tony Robbins that are taking action. Tony Robbins has 16 comments and four shares. Let's see if we can get even better than Tony Robbins. <clears throat> Let's go to, the other one was Cigar Magazine. Cigar Aficionado. Cigar Aficionado, okay. Aficionado, Aficionado, there we are. Okay, and here's Cigar, woohoo, look at that. This is what I like to see. <clears throat> okay, so Cigar Aficionado has 32 likes and 21 comments and five shares. Who do you want to target? That's the audience. Mm -hmm. Because you might think everyone's active. These are the people who are already conditioned. They already know how to comment. They're already active. They're already engaging. Those are the people who are most likely to take action on your content. They already know how to take action on other people's content. If they're taking action, their friends and their family see it. Guess what, the person that's buying cigars, they have other friends that are buying cigars or other people that are in your realm as well. They may be your perfect audience. But we don't wanna just stop there. So we've got aficionados, now we wanna go even deeper. So this is a winning audience. I also like the fact that 33 ads are clicked. That means when you put your ad in front of them, they're also predisposed to act, take action on your ad. They're not offended by ads. So there are some audiences, um, older women, that get kinda huffy with ads. So you might have a lot of ads in your feed and like they have a lot of activity and lots of comments, but you notice that their ad click rate is really low. Then you might not want to target them because with an ad, you might want to make sure it's organic content because they're not going to take action on an ad because they don't trust ads. So test your audience. Don't trust me on that one because not all pages, not all audiences are the same. Okay, so we're going to go now into Cigar Aficionado. We're going to try to find other audiences that are similar to theirs. So in this range, it's all, it looks like a lot of cigar stuff, which makes sense, but you're not wanting to do cigars. He's wanting to do like investments, right? So he doesn't just want cigars, he wants people that are more than that. Do you see anything interesting here that's not just cigars? I'm seeing Brooks Brothers. I'm seeing um, Colt rifles and guns. Mm. 
<coughs> so I don't know about you, but maybe those are people that would also be interested in investment if they have disposable income to be hot, purchasing high-end guns, they might be able to use that disposable income for something else. We don't, we'd have to test the audience to see if that's something for you. And so, San Santiago specifically was like reframing their their image, their <clears throat> self-image and it's and, and their, uh, their life meaning. Life meaning, so of these, which one says I'm gonna work on my image? Probably, you, they have Southern com um, Comfort in here. Ranger Up, Military Apparel. The person following military stuff is probably mm -hmm. doing fitness and taking other actions because they've been fit in the past. Um, I know that loving World War II planes, um, motorcycle people. So y there's a lot of options here. The Second Amendment, biker or not, Federalist Papers. There's a lot of activity stuff that you could test here to see which one of these audiences is the most active. So you want to start with cigar aficionado, but you're going to also want to go in here and find out which ones of these are most active. So let's take... Um, which ones of these are, I'm also working on my brand. Um, um, let's, let's actually do Tony Robbins and see, Tony Robbins, did we do him already? Oh, we did, and he was low. Okay, um, the art of manliness, let's try that one. So we're gonna to pull up the art of manliness. This is the page and see if this is kind of the site of what you want your page to be known for. It's kind of the direction that sounds like he might be going closer than cigars. Mm -hmm. So art of manliness might be something that for him to target. Let's type it into, to the interest and see how it does, if we can. Not all pages we can target, but let's see if we can. Art of man, Linus. there it is. Okay, he has a lot of influ um, those like motivational stuff. I would say Judge Andrew, um, tactical sh stuff. <laughs> John Tossel, so there's a bunch of stuff here that seems a bit more towards the motivational sp space than the other. Let's go, I don't know much about um, other than, let's go in here, activity level. And activity level's still high. So compared to the others, so this would be so someone that you would add in addition to cigar aficionado to test. Because these are the active people, now you wanna test if they do fit your brand or not. I know nothing about art of manliness, and I know nothing about Chicago's cigar aficionados, maybe they, cigar smokers also like investment stuff. I don't know if the niche, niches match, but you can see how they're more active, so they're a place to start looking. Right. <clears throat> cool. Oh, this is, went down a really cool kind of rabbit hole of, of okay. that, yeah, that we, that we were able to catch. That's cool. So does anybody else want a rabbit hole? Anybody live, since you guys are here, that I get to love on you guys first, before we go back to the audience and get another one? All right. Going, going, gone. Going. We're going back to the group. <laughs> All right. So let me jump over here real quick. Um, Anne, her niche is elder care, specifically women caring for their elderly parents and would love ideas on who and what to target. Okay. I don't even remember the numbers, unfortunately. I can I'm sorry. go back and get a screenshot. <clears throat> I don't remember any of the numbers. Sorry. Somebody else got the numbers? You got the numbers? Okay, tell me the numbers. I will rewrite them for everybody so they can get their screenshot. Okay. Are we good? So I press what button? Sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> okay, um, I lost, I don't know, they wanted me to like make, get screenshots or something, we're good. I, I'll, so I, I'm enough. lost too, but we're good. What's the next niche? So um, this was Anne, she has, um, her niche is elder care, specifically women caring for their elderly parents. Okay, that way I don't get, forget what I'm doing. Okay, elder care. I'm sorry guys, my handwriting is so oh, bad. Good. Okay, um, it is one of the things in life I would love to change about myself. <laughs> um, okay, elder care. So let's think about elder care. Elder care would probably be, well, like I said, women. And then I'm wondering what type of person thinks of themselves as caring for, they don't want the world to know that their relative is necessarily sick. That's not like a badge of honor that they'll be sharing and um, liking, but they might be following cooking pages. What other pages would they be following? I'm trying to think of my parents. And they are caring for my grandmother. I usually find that 
the firstborn children mm -hmm. tend to take on this responsibility a lot. I've seen that a lot in my family. As oh. Well. Maybe like medical supplies or things that mm. we would buy if we have like an older parent. Mm -hmm. I thought bingo first. Like 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 bingo? Yeah. Home health. Um, bingo. Um, in my family, on both sides, it's not the oldest child. It's like the ah. fourth and the third. Mm. Um, but I come from a family and with lots of lots of kids. Both my parents have lots of children. Their parents have lots of kids. So, um, home health, bingo, um, gardening. gardening. Ooh. Yeah. They might have looked into facilities too. So I'm gonna call that senior care, see if I can look it up by that. And um, I wonder if they're interested, the home health and home, actually home and health. So let's look it up that way. So we're gonna look for women over the age of 51 and we're gonna do health care. <coughs> health care, universal health care. You know what, they probably care a lot about social security mm -hmm. benefits. Medicare. Because if their parents lose their benefits, they actually don't have money for themselves because that's affecting their life. So social security. Dementia, nutrition. Thank you for everybody. I'm not in that stage, so I totally <laughs> I'm totally getting on, they're all coming in from, from the live chat. Okay, dementia, social security. Okay, so I've got enough here to hopefully get started. So we've got social security, United States. We can go over to activity levels and you can see here that we've got 27, so we're going to do social, uh, there we go. social security. And we've got in the comments, we have 27, and we have 26 in likes, and we have seven in shares. So now we're going to look at dementia. And I'm, going to, I'm not sure if I should call it memory care memory or dementia. Health. Memory care. Alzheimer's, oh. al Alzheimer's, excuse me, Alzheimer's too, was another suggestion. I cannot spell, oh my word, dementia. Mm. Alzheimer's Association, let's try that. Okay, so this is a good one. Okay. Okay, so we've got Alzheimer's Association, we've got 33, 33, and... Um, nine. This actually looks like a real winner. Actually, looks like a serious winner. Rachel, yeah. Try nurse next door. Nurse next door. This is from the audience, guys. They just said nurse next door. Let's try that one. Nurse. Nurse next door. And nurse next door home health services. This one's even better than Alzheimer's. Okay, and this one is 36, 34, 11. We also had a suggestion, suggestion, a home for mom. I'm assuming that's maybe a service because it was in quotes when suggested. Okay, it's not pulling anyone up for that one. It might be not big enough or it might be not as, um, not as relevant in an audience. So sometimes if they targeted, I've noticed that when pages target non-United States fans, that they may not come up here and not, may not be findable whenever we search their audiences. So that might be a hint to y'all. Anyway, so just something to think about. Um, not saying that they're fake audiences, but because you can't tell by just that, but it's one of the signals. Okay, so with interest, we could look up um, ancestry.com, people who are doing those ancestry searches. Ancestry.com, okay, here we go, last one. And 333311. So if I was going to start, I would start 3333. I would start with one of these two. One of these three, but this would be my winner to start with. For obvious reasons because they're the most active. Now let's go it's, it's nurse nurse next door, right? So we're going to pull them back up again. And we're going to go into the pages and we're going to find Make, confirm the page is who the people that we want. Oh my word, look at this guys. What do you see that I forgot to notice before? 45 ads click. So if you target them, that's a hot audience. 
They tend to take action on your ads. Um, that's, especially with older women, that's, that's kind of unusual, I don't know. So test, I, I don't target old women regularly, so just test, but that might be a really hot audience. Okay, so now we're gonna go into page likes. Well, first let's check the location just for fun to see that they are, the top countries are the United States. Well, we already did United States, so that makes sense. So here we've got California, so wait a second, these are high earning income areas. Tarrant County, Texas is a high earning income area. Um, Wilmington, Delaware, high earning income area. So the people that are following this page is not only are they taking action, they also have disposable income to spend. So because they're, that's a little secret tip for you guys. One of the things I do with my ads when I'm targeting cold audience um, and I want somebody that's going to see this as an impulse purchase, I will target the top 10 wealthiest cities in the United States. I can no longer target by the people who have the most money, but I can target everyone that lives within 25 miles of these cities and we all know the average house demographics of those areas and thus I can target the people who have the most money. Um, so I can go into page likes and I can see Nurse Next Door, the different types of content that we have. You would go through here and you'd find which ones do you want to target. So the many faces of off, help me mama, living with lung cancer, all of these pages you can see. <coughs> and you can go through here and these are what I would call your niche neighborhood. These pages right through here that are all in the same topic, so they're not your competition, they're your niche neighbors. So you want to have your page connect with these as many ways as possible. And then you test them and see which one does the best. Cool, so did we cover this enough that everyone understands how this works? Or I have yes. one quick question. Um, for the, the numbers that you're getting here, is this average per post or is this in a period of time? How are you, what are these numbers exactly? So Facebook tells us, let's go on into this. This is the audience. Now one thing to know is Nurses Next Door, this audience has 10 to 15,000 people that are active on it. So it's not a very big audience. You would wanna combine this with another audience if you were targeting with ads because you can see right here, Facebook will tell you what it is. Facebook will also tell you right here, this is the number of times the selected audience has based on the performance of them on Facebook. So usually it's in the past month, in the last 30 days, here it tells you. So the average user of this in the last 30 days. So Facebook tells you this information, it's not something secret that I know, um, you just, they literally will tell you all of this content. So face, Facebook is, a, a, for a business, I think they're one of the most transparent businesses out there because you can see all this information on your own, you don't have to guess, they'll let you know it. Okay, so did this help you guys understand how to find your perfect people? Yeah. Okay, because remember we need our perfect people, our perfect message, and we covered the message earlier, and next you need the perfect content, and that's feeding the platform. Um, Pinterest likes long images, right, with words on them. Facebook does not want words on them. Instagram wants stories, and they want their stories to be this. They want a poll with their stories. So every platform has different things that they want from its audience. If we can create that content in the way that our audience wants, we will convert better. So let's go back into the content here. And we covered that. We wanna drive one action at a time. So our personal profile, we might share something into our group from our person. Next time we're gonna share something from our page into our group. Next we're gonna share something from our page into Messenger, our page to our website. And we're gonna target a post from our page to our target audience to bring on new people who will become our engaged people. I run an engagement ad to bring on those new people because my goal is to get those micro engagements and those macro um, big macro engagements. Micro engagements because I can invite them to like my page, macro engagements because that's what Facebook says it wants. So the more that I get these macro engagements, the more my content will be seen next time. So some people say, well, Rachel, that's not true because my post, it got 48 comments, but it only reached 2,000 people. I'm like, but those 2,000 people, because they left comments, they're gonna be a lot more likely to see your next time of content and that's how it snowballs. So you start with those engagements. Those engaged people will bring on the other people that will take action on content. Okay, you wanna make custom audiences. So um, if you don't know how to make a custom audience, I'm pretty sure there's a training inside the DM mm -hmm. lab to help you guys with that. If not, reach out to me on my Facebook page or me on my profile. I will help you make a pro an, your first custom audience they're not hard to create. You create a custom audience of those people that engage. You can create saved audiences of the pages that you know convert for you after you've tested them and you've got them working for you. Um, each element reflects the other. We, our audience is not on one place. How many of you, um, 
When you're, do you email your best friend or do you text them over chat? Text. Um, how many of you are in a group with a friend? How many of you have shared content in a meme from a page in the last month that you thought was funny? Okay. We do all of those things. If we as a business just do ads on our page, we're missing all of those parts of our audience that um, Facebook wants us to incorporate of who they are. Just like we're not in one place, our business shouldn't be either. Um, and I showed you guys this earlier. We want to make sure that our, our entire Facebook ecosystem is optimized so we can get results. And this, this is like a how to use Facebook in the different levels. If we had time, I'll go into this in more depth. But basically, on our profile, there's actions that we can take that will help our profile get more exposure. There's the actions that we can take on our page to get our page more exposure. There's things that we can do in a group that get our group more exposure. And then on the bottom, I call those the ninja tactics. When you use the ninja tactics and you combine them with the, the regular everyday stuff, you can snowball the engagement on your content. So things like watch parties. You put the content on a page, share it into a group. In a watch party, you get tons of comments and engagements. Now your content's blowing up on your page. Next time that you post, those people that engage on your watch party are much more likely to see your content in their feed. OK, if your page is broken, how many of you are like, well, my page has 53,000 people and no one's engaging? The reason why they're engaging is one of three things every single time I see a page. And you guys are welcome in DM Lab to say, hey, here's my page, or to reach out to me and say, hey, here's my page. What's going on with it? And I can give you guys a fast overview of it. Um, the three things that are generally wrong with your page, you've got the wrong message, you've got the wrong audience. Cigar people might not be people who buy investments or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Who knows? You have to test to see if those are your audience. Um, it might be that it's the wrong content. So you're putting out. Somebody earlier today, they were posting link after link after link, and they didn't have pictures with their links, remember? So there was that content. Facebook's, it's not optimized for Facebook, so Facebook's not going to distribute it farther in this feed. If you have the right message, the right audience, and your content's still doing bad, it could be that the fact that you're promoting content that's inappropriate. Um, I coach um, one of the largest Instagrammers in the, the world. They have like 20 different accounts that all have multiple millions of fans. So like they literally are a brand that has like th dozens of brands underneath of them. So they're massive on Instagram. They're like, why is our Facebook page 125,000 people and completely dead? Because everything you post is from Instagram and YouTube. So like that's great, but you're not doing anything for Facebook. Yes, you've got your message dialed down. Yes, you know your audience because you've done this before on Instagram. You know how to reach your audience. You know how to relate to them. You know the content. But you're putting in the content in a way Facebook really doesn't like because you're not feeding the actual platform. You're driving everyone everywhere else. So of course, they're not going to stay because you're not giving them the content that would feed Facebook. So if you fix those three things, you convert. It converts to whatever your purpose is. So this brand, they're not trying to sell. They're just trying to get a message to build their brand on Facebook so that they can basically gain more sponsored posts, so different companies will hire them to sp promote their products because right now companies are like, wait, but you're just on Instagram. Well, can you do anything else for me? So they want, they don't want to sell a product. They just want an audience. For you, what is your purpose? If you have an audience, you have the message, the content, you can add engagement to it, get those people who are most active to talk to you, you're going to have your purpose. Okay. I, oh, does this even play? This would be so cool. Mm -hmm. This is the world's best product. Not best product, but it was pretty cool. It's a box. Let's see if I can get it the beginning. It's a box, and it's, um, it's a box that I thought was really awesome. It's a gift box. It would go crazy on Etsy. It's a gift box that's like a personality, and when you open it, confetti flies at you. <laughs> so like, who would think that that's fun to give as a prank gift to somebody? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> hilarious box that looks like a person put some eyes on it and call it his name and the, it opens up and it's a confetti flies at him. It's totally cool, right? Um, he, this person that developed this product didn't sell a single box. I think it's a really cool product. Yeah. It's the right product. Those of you who are here, you may have the perfect product, but if you don't have an audience 
and you're not talking to your audience, you can have the best product in the whole wide world, you're not putting it out there, you can't sell it. Um, the reason why this is relevant, let me see if I can get out of it, is that's my dad, and he still, 25 years later, still has that box. This is my dad taken like three months ago, and I was like, hey dad, remember that box you guys spent hours making and all those designs you made of it? Like I've told you guys, my parents are successful entrepreneurs now, um, but even successful entrepreneurs have a ton of failures in their past. And my dad, every two years, starts a new business. I don't know where I get that from. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's just say I've been in Mula for two years, so I'm getting a little scared. Um, but yeah, so every two years, I've started a new business too. Um, but my dad had, um, this business was one of his business ventures, and he did not sell a single one. Despite the fact it's been days, months, weeks, prototypes, getting printers to foil it, getting them created, and he still, 25 years later, still has the box in his house. So it meant a lot to him, enough that he kept it after all those years, right? He never sold a single one because he didn't have an audience. So um, that's me and my dad with my firstborn when I was like 20-something. Um, Isn't she tiny? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know where I get the, the, the funky faces. Um, <laughs> Every selfie I have is like, ah! <laughs> Me and my dad have a lot of similarities. Okay, we have a page, just like my dad. Facebook wasn't around then. What was he gonna do to sell? He could have put a billboard out, um, gone door to door, hey guys, buy my boxes. Um, he went and tried to get it onto like Hallmark stores and into like, but they didn't know how to ship it and they didn't, they didn't see the value of it. If he had Etsy today, he would be killing it, right? We have a page because we want to be where all the stores are. We want to be where the traffic is. Back in the day, it would have been being in like the Hallmark store in the mall. Um, for him, that would have been where the traffic was. We don't need to be in the Hallmark store at the mall to sell our, our awesome gift box. We can be on Facebook. We can do that. We can go to the people with Facebook. It's so cool. Because we need a page because that's where the social proof lives and where we can collect those audiences. Um, so how do, what do you do? You share your content, um, share content from other people. Remember when I was doing Teach Reader? We start by sharing other people's content because we don't know really what to post. We gotta, we're gonna research the pages and find out what to post. Then we go original, we create our own content, and we test our market to see what content they want to engage with. Use Facebook search bar. Facebook will literally tell me what content about Christmas lights should I post. If I am a Christmas light hanging supplier and I go around and I hang Christmas lights every Christmas for people's houses, Facebook will tell me exactly what type of content I can put on my Facebook page to let people know that I will help them with their house get the cool Christmas lights up. Um, make a list of pages that are similar to yours that your readers will also read and then watch them on Insights. You can literally, Facebook literally tells you what kind of content does well. And Adam of he used to run Facebook's newsfeed. He now runs Instagram's newsfeed. Um, he's got his fingerprints all over it, and that's why Facebook and Instagram are more and more alike is because of this guy right here. Um, that's why the algorithm of the two has gotten a lot of fun this last year. He's been really clear that he wants to help people have connections between each other. And how do they have connections with conversations? We make that happen with our pages. So our pages are needed. Facebook's not going away. The news feed's not going away. As long as we're helping people have conversations, that's how last night Tara said, hey, Rachel, just a heads up, you've got your 40th person to get to over 10 million in reach on a single post. Um, just because it's super cool to see. Those of you who still doubt that it's possible, I'm going to pull up my, uh, my page here. Let's go my page. Moolah. It's totally possible. If it's possible for um, if it's possible for Allison, it's possible for Tara. It's possible for us. So those of you who think, "Hey, Facebook is dead," it's not. Here we go. 39th student. Top post. 39th student. Wait a second. Make that 40. She has her screenshot. Now I haven't verified that that screenshot is accurate, and she didn't like grab somebody else's screenshot and all that other stuff. We do have more that I do before I go public on it, but. We had 39th person yesterday, I announced it 23 hours ago, exactly. We just got our 39th person to go 10 million in reach on a single post. If they can do it, Facebook's not dead. It's the way that people are running their pages. They're dead. 
it's working for them, it can work for us, right? It, we just have to take action on the content. So let's see if we've got more. I think we're almost at the end. Do you guys want more? Oh, I forgot about these two. <laughs> so I want to protect you guys from making the same mistakes that I've done. So um, I don't call this one a mistake because this one, I've learned a ton from this individual. He was my first coach, um, first business coach. How many of you guys um, hired business coaches to help you take it to the next level? Okay, I've hired five business coaches in my life and all of them have greatly increased my revenue and greatly increased my life and I'm indebted to this guy. Um, and as he helped me grow my product sales, um, he also told me something which was virals aren't possible. I was like, okay, we've done it so many times. If we've done it so many times, there is a formula, it is possible. So this is a marketer that's huge, you would all recognize his name, but He's paying to play. The person with the biggest ad budget wins instead of the person who's connecting with their audience. So if you can connect with your audience, you can get more people out there than he does. This is another one that says, hey, we're going to work harder, we're gonna pay more. I wanna protect you from the stupid tax. How many of you have spent money on ads and it's never had any ROI? And you're like, ads don't work. They do work if you have the Facebook page. I showed you guys a screenshot of how much I've spent in my ad account. I, one of you has verified my Stripe account. Ads do work. I've made a lot of money off of Facebook. It works because I've developed my page and developed my audience. So I wanna save you guys from the stupid tax. This person right here um, with the lovely pink face was an agency that I hired before I felt confident in doing ads. Before I felt confident, I thought, that I had to pay to play. Everyone kept telling me I have to pay to play. I have to pay more money and I have to test my audiences more. If I do that, if I buy likes, then I'll have social proof so my ads will convert. I kept think, hearing all those things. So I gave him $26,000 in ad spend. <laughs> well, and his, ad, his agency fees plus the ad spend was about 26K. Mm -hmm. And in return, I didn't make 26K. I think I made like, I don't know, three. It was stupid tax because I paid for likes that weren't my buyers because he told me I needed social proof. Now, I've been doing this for nine years and so I've made a lot of stupid tax decisions, but you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna buy likes for social proof that aren't real fans that are gonna become buyers, right? Because that 26K is just money down the crapper because Facebook's never going to sell to the person from a different country who doesn't speak your language and isn't interested in your topic. Um, I also, don't want you guys to get stuck in that cycle where he was like, we just need another grand to test because we haven't tested enough. We just need to test some more to get conversions. You don't need to test for conversions if you're attracting that audience, just talk to them. They are literally going to tell you. One of you were here in this audience today and you told me I was waiting to start my page until I had my product so then I could begin ad spend to begin the conversion ads and the test to see if my pro what, what my audience was. Instead of stop, collect the audience and have them buy in and create your product with you. So um, this system, buy likes, test endless testing, that's great if you're an ad agency because you're paid on the percentage of ad spend and the amount that they're taking action, right? This is great if you're an ad agency, I'm not trying to knock the model, but what I am saying is those of you who are business people and you're like, I don't have 26 grand lady to just blow on ads. I didn't either, okay? I was a mom with six kids and that was like a lot of money to me at the time because I was still learning how this had to work. If I collected the audience and I asked them, I wouldn't have to go through those endless test cycles, endless test cycle, oh, just another thousand. The test, we're gonna find out the test. We saw all these positive signs, we're gonna find the test. 26 grand later, I was like, wait a second. Okay, and guys, my 26 grand mistake is a low one. And I'm not calling these a mistake, but someone who um, hired the Harmon Brothers told me that they spent over $250,000 on the ad um, to make it go to a million shares. So we have 1.5 million on Squatty Potty, um, 469,000 shares on Unicorn Gold, 443,000 shares on Fiberfix, Purple has 175,000 shares, and I was told by somebody who had hired them that they spent over $250,000 to make that happen. 
They considered it money well spent because it converted for them. But you don't have to. Those of you who don't have $250,000 to create a produced video like that, you don't have to have $250,000. Ursula has, she said right here in this post, I got 303 million shares, so more than double anything that they had organically. And she didn't just do it once. She did it twice. And she's working on her third right now. Whoops, there's her second one. So here's, here's the first one, 4 million shares. She got it up to 4 million. She said it was 3 million, but I went to her page. Facebook says that she's had 4 million shares on that post. She sells content, makes money from this post. No money spent getting it out there, though. Um, eventually, that one died. And virals can become so big that they get killed in the market. So this one is dead because it's, it's tapped out. People have shared it too many times that now they're hiding it. So it's tapped out, but that's OK, because she went on and did it again. So there's her first one. Here's her second one. She has 2 million shares on it right now. And right now, if you go to my Facebook page, my wall, and my Facebook group, she just told me in the group like a day ago, oh my word, actually we're working on a third. We have over a million shares on it, 1.3 million. So my guess is that one's going to be up there too. Give it three months. So if she can do it with zero ad spend, she's never made a single ad. Wow. If she can do it, you can do it, and you don't need to spend $250,000 to make that happen. Okay, you can, if your content is solid, you can get real results. Um, okay, we're closing up. Now, I'm, I'm gonna stop and we're gonna do more hot seats because I know that you guys love hot seats, and that's what I'm here for, but I'm gonna kind of wrap up the content for you so we can begin hot seats for you guys. Okay, so hot seats, I'm gonna pull up another chair, give me like two minutes of a, transition break and I'll pull up chair. Those of you who are in the group, let me know your pages so we can look at your pages. And those of you who are here, I saw when I said hot seats, head started nodding. Let's do hot seats for you until they tell me your time's up and you gotta go home, lady. Thank you guys for letting us redo the stage with us. Um, those of you who are watching, I'm here to answer your questions, to give more hot seats, to look at your pages. That's what we're here for for you. And I know we've had questions here in the audience. One of the questions somebody asked was, why did I name my group the name I did? And that was for SEO. So there's different strategies that people use on a Facebook page than people use on a Facebook group. So your groups, you don't necessarily need to have what I call a bumper sticker. You might want to, like I do, use your page name, something that someone would search. So my page name isn't titled Rachel Miller's group. It's not titled Moolah Marketer, which is my Facebook page name. It's titled Facebook Page Strategies because someone can type Facebook page, Facebook strategies, Facebook, you know, all of those different combinations and they'll be able to find me. So that's why a group is very different in the way that people interact than pages. There's so much more to how you can optimize your content um, on Facebook in groups, in pages, on profiles, on messenger chat. Um, yeah, the sky's kind of the limit. Okay, questions from here before we go to those of you who are alive. Any questions here? Or anyone for Hatsi? Yes. What's your advice on running multiple pages to target different sub niches? Um, sub niches is fun. Um, you just have multiple pages. I have probably 40 pages that I have in my, my realm of my control. Um, we're actively growing about eight of them right now. So um, of the pages on my in my audience. So. We also have a strategy for once you have an audience that's big enough and you're making money on it, you can keep it, maintain it. So there's strategies to grow and then there's strategies to maintain your audience so you can stay sane and go build something else. Because we all love, I don't know if any of you are starters and you love to build the next thing. I'm a build the next thing person. So we've, we have different strategies for different sizes of pages. But yes, you can definitely have multiple niches and multiple sub niches with an umbrella page for sure. Jay Shetty does this, he's got multiple pages under his brand. Um, jo Dr. Axe has that. He's got multiple pages. Um, once you're over 300,000 fans, I actually suggest that people have a second page, kind of as a backup and kind of as their own niche neighbor. Any other questions from the group before we go live? OK, live. All right, so first one is Happy Self Journal. OK, so you want me to do a hot seat? Or do oh, you have any more questions? Oh, do you want to do questions? I'm sorry. Do you have a first I question, then we'll do a hot seat? seat? Yeah, um, I can. 
I can do some questions that um, people have had um, as we've gone through, and then we can jump in. Okay, well, sorry about yeah. that. So, um, just to kind of roll things back through the day, um, Sin wanted to know about the pixel. Um, you can target your own group members as a custom audience with a pixel. Is no, it a different pixel. No, what you can do with the group pixel is track conversions. So if you have a separate landing page that you put into your group, then you can make a custom audience of those people. You can just track conversions with the group pixel. You cannot track, um, you cannot create a custom audience. Now there is a roundabout way to use your page to create a custom audience. So what I would do to create a custom audience would be, here's my page. So I've got my page, I've got my content on my page. I put a video on my page, but I backdate it. So it's three months ago. So it's not on my wall. This is three months ago. It's as if it was three months ago. And then I take this video and I share it into my group or into even somebody else's group. You can do this on any group. You share that page anywhere that you're allowed to. You can capture the people. So people then watch this video and I can make a custom audience of the views. So that's one of the, the tactics that we can use to um, capture an audience using just the video views. Okay. But that's it, from a group, you just capture the audience of the capture the audience of the video, but you basically hid your video. So I do this with watch parties of my course content. So one of the things we've done is we create our we have our course and I have it on a hidden Facebook page. The entire thing is on Facebook. If you are a really good stalker, you could probably find my entire course on Facebook. But I have it hidden where you can't see the all the content. So Basically, if you follow my page, I'm going to help you unfollow it. You're going to have to like, keep trying to find it again to get into the, the page. And I might change the page name on you a lot. The reason being is I want it to just be used for custom audiences. So I have that ad account shared. Um, so that's like another ninja tick. I've got lots of ninja ticks. Um. <laughs> yeah, OK. Any other questions before? Um, Hot seats or are we? One, one more real quick. Oh, did we this, have I'd love to make sure that they all their questions are the previous content before we Cool. Perfect. Okay, so um, Colleen wanted to know how many people can you delete from your Facebook page a day before Facebook puts you in jail? I've never had any problems with deleting and I've deleted a thousand at a time. Okay. So I just turn on Netflix and I delete while well, Netflix, you will notice, you won't go to jail, but you're, you will notice after you've deleted a bunch that you will have two weeks of decreased reach. So you'll think, oh my word, did I make the words, world, world's worst mistake? I just deleted 10,000 fans from my fan page. Facebook hates me. It takes two to three weeks for Facebook to like, oh my word, they all hate you, to get that over with. And then they see the engagement and you get the rise. So it does take time to see that. I do, um, I do that in my Facebook groups. I was just so ask. I do that in my groups before I have a launch. I go through my group and I delete all the fake people that I don't think um, are taking action. And I just turn on Netflix and you know, the, we all have that day where we have the flu and we don't want to work. And so we want to do something that's like productive, but we want to actually watch TV and completely veg with our chicken soup. Um, you can easily delete people. It's like a monotonous task. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, do that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a flu task. Um, and then one question um, with your group where you help people um, get to that 10 million, was that in um, organic or paid or was it a mixture of both? Organic. Or all organic. Those people who've gotten to 40,000, um, over 10,000 reach, they have to spend less than $180 to get there. I don't know why I chose $180, um, but I figured $180 to reach 10 million people is pretty much free. It's good, good spend. Yeah, I think that's pretty <laughs> decent spend. Um, so, and that was my mind. If you spend more than $200, then you're 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 getting into the pay to play, and um, we wanted to keep it. So, yes, have I had more than that reach 10 million? For sure, I've had tons of companies reach 10 million, but I don't count them in my what I call the eight figure club, the people who've gotten to over 10 million as organic unless they've done it with no ad spend. And I require screenshots of every single person to prove, prove it and multiple screenshots. And yeah, I, we verify it lots of ways so that they don't doctor their results. Um, and we do rewards for the people who get to the eight figure club. It's a lot of fun. It's like a thing we do in my community. It's really cool. Yeah. Well, that's it for the questions if you want okay. to go to the hot, hot seat. seat. Yes, question here. Awesome. Real fast, um, the, the dice. Who's got the dice? Pass it back. So I've, I've heard you say before about uh, growing the audience doing a $5 a day ad spend. And, and maybe I'm remembering that incorrectly. I just yeah. saw that. Uh, Under $5 a day is what I t typically say, yeah. So how do you spend that money? Um, I spend the money 
on that video thing. So we're gonna, I'll sketch it out really fast for you guys, um, just because I'm a sketcher, even though I can't draw. Um, so here's my page. So I've got my profile here, and I want to first test my message and then test my targeting. So I'll have a video up, and my point is not video versus link. That's not what I care about, is which message do my audience want. So I'm gonna put up, here's a photo, um, next one's a video, but it's different messages. So I'm gonna put, <clears throat> now how many of you have heard you need to have, it takes so many days for the learning, and then after the learning, that's when you, like, you decide to increase your ad spend, right? I only want the learning. I only want the learning. So I only run my ad until the learning's done. So generally, three days, um, sometimes less. Sometimes you can do it for one day or two days. Um, if you're somebody who's doing really fast, you can do $5 really fast on each of them. Um, me, I tend to do $2 a day for three days. Now, I might be able to shut that off earlier. Once it's reached 2,000 people, I'll know if they take action on it. So if I do all of these at the same exact time, At the end of this time, yes, I'm spending $8 right now. But at the end of this time, I know this is the winner, and I'm not running ads anymore. I'm just creating more content just like that message. So it could be message one, message two, whatever those things. I don't know what my audience would say about themselves because I haven't tested them yet. I test that, and then this is, I'm doing it just to find out the learning of which one of these is the most sexy title, sexy message that my audience relates to and then I run my post on those. So I do it for, you create the test for organic. You're not testing to run the ad for forever, I'm testing for organic. So we do do evergreen ads, but that's, that's I call them my, the birthday ad, the evergreen ad. Um, we do do some of those to keep our ad account clean um, so that people can basically get chat support if they need it. There's a lot of perks to having a clean ad account. Um, but So eventually you will wanna have a $2 a ad running for forever even a $1 day ad, but when you're in this test phase, I just wanna find out which one's the winner and then create more content just like that until I'm ready for my next test. So that's why I said $5 a day, but it might be $8 for three days and then nothing for three weeks. Um, with the girl that we got to one million Facebook fans in one year, one week, and one month, she spent a total of $683 in ad spend the entire year because she just needed those initial tests to find out who her audience was and what the message was, and then she knew how to connect with them because we have those niche neighborhood tasks, so she was able to connect with them and then grow her audience. She only needed them for that initial test. So um, most people spend a lot less than um, $5 a day. Thank you. Yeah. And okay, hot seat time. Hot seat time, Woo all right. <laughs> They're my favorite. So we do have one from the live stream, but um, after that, I would love to get also someone from, from here in the audience, too, if you're feeling brave yet. Yeah. Um, so the first one from the live stream is Happy Self Journal, and Happy Self is one word. I feel like I know her. Um, Are you in my, I, so I think she's in my community. Do I know her? I feel like I know her page. Uh, I, I remember well, this one from another Elite Workshop critique, too. Okay, maybe that's where I'm remembering from. Okay, so we're going to go into my page here, and it's, Happy self journal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when I come here, I know that she's about kids because the description said that. So if you go back, when you scroll over her page, it has. Um, somewhere in there it said um, journal for children. So here if we go back, let's see if we can type it in back again. Here it is, a journal for kids ages six to 12. Now that's what it says here about the page. But when you click over, do you see anything that says six to 12 year olds? Come on. Okay, when you come here, do you see six to 12 year old kids? You don't. You don't really know what exactly it is. Other than, do you guys remember back in like the, like the 
60s or 70s, my mom had these like children's books that she gave us when she was a kid. They had these circle faces and they had like the smiley, here's Grumpy Man. You did, did, oh yeah, yeah. Miss Sunshine. Yeah, yeah, Miss Sun, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. That kind of reminds me a little bit of that. So mm -hmm. I don't know if this happy self journal, like we're gonna go back to Little Miss Sunshine, uh, Mr. Grumpy. Um, I would make it clear it's about kids journaling. So get a six year old, a 12 year old, and have them writing journals and with smiley faces, have them doodling on a page. That's something that says journaling for kids. Um, going through some more here. Um, <clears throat> one thing I noticed too is that they have, a lot of you have the auto population, the auto messenger that pops up. How many of you guys have opened up a page on mobile and this pops up and covers up the whole page on mobile and you have to close off of it to be able to see the content? If you want to have Messenger auto respond pop up like this, and I would disable it personally, but if you want it up because you want it for something, make sure that this is content that's about your audience, not about you. Because if they're coming here and it says, how much do your products or services cost? You're already pushing them away and they're feeling like they're being sold to. Instead, have that question, which I know you wanna say, what time in my hours open or do you want my coaching services? Don't start there, because this is their first initial interaction with you. Start with, do you have a six to 12 year old? Why, yes I do. That's an interaction that then you can capture and you can retarget that person on Messenger because they're the right person and it's not coming at them as I'm going to sell to you. So this, I would change your, your automatic messaging as well. <clears throat> Love, oh my word, something amazing that you have. Look at that guys, 133 reviews. You are loved, gal, you're loved. I love it, okay? So, you know, your audience loves you. They're engaging with you, they love you. That's, that's amazing that you have 133 reviews. <clears throat> now, again, mobile, so the, this is not mobile optimized, and then I would say here, this isn't mobile either. The image is mobile optimized, like in the sense it's limited text in the middle, um, under 20% text, looks great that one, but the big paragraph is something that most people aren't going to read on mobile because they're gonna look at that and they're gonna be like, oh, that seems like work. Now, if you split, split it up from a mom, space, it brought curiosity, I now have a reason to keep reading. From a mom, what? Um, what does yellow make you think and feel? Okay, <clears throat> going down, 147 reviews, never mind, 133, I was wrong, 147, awesome. Here we go, this is what I would have wanted to see on the profile. That right there, chop that. See how my mouse is scrolling? Chop that right there, that would be the perfect profile picture. They're journaling, you're getting that image, the wide image of this pen, pen centered. It's really clear, it's about journaling. Um, going down some more, love the journal. Honestly, can you go to this one and take screenshots of just this section here and ask your audience to close caption, like what caption would you give to this? Get them more engaged. So you're, a lot of this is resume content. This is just in from a mom, da 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 da. Instead, here's the mom's photo. What would you, if you could caption this for the kid, what would you say? And then share your splurb about your products and stuff like that. But that gets your audience to engage on your content with who they think it is and have them take ownership in the content a little bit. Like have them interact with your content. Scrolling some more. You see, here you have two comments. I would love to see that be 50 comments because you could have a screenshot of just this one little section. So you would take a right here and put a caption of this, just this word right here, or just this one right here. What on earth is this? Tell us, is it a drinking Coke or baby? The, the real answer is in the comments. <clears throat> so they have to read to get what the, what the real answer is. Hopefully that gave you some tips and um, helps you get farther. You've got potential. There's, you, your audience loves you. Looking over here, I see that you're niche neighborhooding well. What I mean by that is when I see the pages that you're like, they're pages that make sense with your niche. A lot of times um, I see some pages where you like the golf association, but it doesn't make sense that you like the golf association when you're a kid's coloring page. So your, your page has a lot of um, good signs about it. I would love to see this be mobile optimized. Cool. Great. Do you have a suggestion for, for maximum word count for stuff like that? Um, 150 characters for your first line and then a space. So that's what people tend to read. Um, your first 150 characters are the most important. So that's what you want to have is something that 
built engagement, you can have really long posts. And actually, I think Facebook is going to have more long posts coming really soon, that they're actually going to emphasize longer posts because they're opening up um, H2 headlines, H1 headlines, mm -hmm. and they're adding bold, and they're adding the ability to add lists into your post, and they're adding the ability to add quotes into your post. So that's being rolled out over this year. Some people already have that capability, so you're seeing a couple people beta testing it as it's rolled out, but it's coming for the rest of us soon. Um, that tells me they're going to want long posts, but they want it to be mobily optimized. So 150 characters, the most one, then a space so there's a reason for people to scroll and read the rest. If it's a big paragraph, people see a big paragraph and their eyes kind of glaze over and they can't read all the letters, the words. So, okay. cool. All right. The, um, did anybody in the audience want to go next? Anybody we haven't done today? <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Um, let's. I can grab one from the live chat again. Um, ecology skin care. And this is Crystal's page. Okay, and skin care is one word. Oh, sorry, whoops. If I, here we go. Okay, um, seeing right now, it comes across as salesy, and I would cut back on the number of words here. So I see it as a container, and I see one thing, like you've got ecology skincare here, you've got ecology skincare on your pro profile, you've also got it here, multiple places on here, ecology and ecology. You could tone that down and have one or two, but having all of them I think is wasting space, that we can't see skin, and we can't see the product. We see a tin. So I would make this maybe the tin, or the tin even open with a finger in it, so we can tell it's something that you put on your skin. Um, and then here, cut back the number of words, because when people are scrolling, how many of you can describe the ad that you just saw? Those of you in the audience. We had it up for almost a minute. How many of you can describe what you saw? Huh? Words. words. Okay, so we don't know what you were selling, which is great, but like, what I'm saying, it's great that you have the free birthday coupon, but if you actually want them to take action on your content, you're gonna want to not make that into a funnel and make that more about your product and who your audience is, because they're not actually reading that. So um, going down more, I love that you have a video. Your video looks like a lot of fun. Looking though at the video, do you guys see anything in the video that you could do to improve it? One thing that I've noticed with videos, and with any type of content, let's see if it shows. Oh, it doesn't Hi, show. Christopher. It didn't show it, but if you go back, you can see her custom thumbnail. What did her, the custom thumbnail, what did you guys notice with it? What does her custom thumbnail have? Curvy font. Mm. It's really hard to read curvy font. So I like to use those gothic fonts, because gothic fonts you can read without thinking about it. The only difference is if you're trying to have someone like read for a long, longer period of time and it's somebody that has, say, learning disabilities or um, like you're a reading teacher and, or you're teaching to, you're reaching out to somebody who's like depressed or something like they're, If they're having a reading disability, you will want to use Comic Sans. A lot of you don't like Comic Sans, but Comic Sans is very easy for people who have reading disabilities to read. So if your audience is one that you already know struggles with reading, Comic Sans. If your audience is not someone that struggles with reading, Gothic fonts. So, um, You're right. I, it, 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 I'm it, an expert. And it tests, it tests over and over again, curvy fonts just do not convert. Yep. So, um, and curvy fonts with a lot of background and lots of color and a, a shadow and a cover borderline, you're, gonna, you're, you're going to confuse your audience and they may not click through and watch it. Whereas if you said skincare secrets mm -hmm. in gothic font with a black background, white text, really clear, easy to read, they may be more likely to click through. And for those, um, those thumbnail images, is it a good idea to maybe show the after state or at first? Facebook or? doesn't like before and afters, even in thumbnails on videos. Oh, okay. So it's actually against terms of service with your ads to do before and after ads. Um, and they've actually cut back on those in even personal profile images. Um, their target, they don't want before and after images come across as MLM. And they don't like MLM. Gotcha. So limit your before and afters. Um, you could show like a before and after maybe on your s single hand,
But a beforehand and an afterhand, focusing on one body part, it's against they, it's in the terms of service with ads that they do, do not like those um, in ads. If they don't like them in ads, you know that they also don't like it in organic feed. They're telling you exactly what they want and what they don't want. So maybe just focus on one or the other, uh, image of, of a before or an image or an image of an ad. I would not image on before because who wants to be reminded of the negative? <laughs> True. Yeah. Nobody wants the negative. They want the positive. Yeah. When you're showing, selling a clean house, selling like the house, do you want to show the, hi, I can clutter for your house. Here's a house that's a disaster. I'll help you. Mm. Here's the house cleaned. This is what we can do for you. Hire me as your declutterer. You want the finished product of what people want to become. So if you have to pick, you pick the, the, the um, Always after. Always after. <laughs> um, but authentic images of the after. The perfect picture perfect after. Um, I was actually talking to um, coaching a client who runs HGTV shows and has multiple HGTV shows. And he was wondering what he could do to increase his reach on Facebook. His pictures were too perfect. You can be too pretty mm -hmm. that people don't think it's possible for them and their house and them and their life. If you show the real you, um, the real you that's got the wrinkles and that grays her hair. I have, I'm a solidly gray hair person and I dye my hair every four to six weeks to not be gray. Um, if I show myself with my roots coming in, as is and be like, dude, it's time. <laughs> Let's just say it's time. That, that's authentic for my audience and they understand that and they'll relate to it. So don't, you don't need to be picture perfect, um, but you do need to be that end state that they want to have in their lives. Okay, going through here. Um, love that, love your reviews. Throwback. Um, I would just start with what your content is and like I said before, um, add that line and then the details. Um, notice here, this sales post. A lot of people are like, what can I do to get my products to sell more? If you look like an ad, you smell like an ad, people don't click, don't comment, don't even buy. Um, I've noticed we were selling a product on one of my blogs and it was selling like hotcakes. And I went by and I was like, what was making it go crazy? And I found out that one of my um, assistance team members, whatever you want to call her role at the time, she had posted, oh my word, look at these reviews. They're the funniest reviews you've ever read in your entire freaking life. And she left a comment to the reviews on the product. And it was one of the products, if you type in funny Amazon reviews, that's what she did. And she found one that fit our niche and she shared it. And everyone's laughing at the reviews and then going to buy the product because it was funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for you, if it looks like an ad, smells like an ad, your audience isn't gonna click over and they're not gonna engage on it. Um, but if it looks like content, they'll engage with it even if it's an Amazon ad. So this one looks, the all white background usually looks like a, an ad. So make it a lifestyle shot, um, make it a conversation with your audience, and they'll tend to click through more. Okay, and yeah, hopefully was this helpful? And I love this image right here, kind of cool. Um, another one, are we good? Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, I have one more, um, his is called um, it's it's Facebook slash Comrades Coach, but it's his name as the page. So it's Lindsay L I. Can you spell it for me, Comrades? Yeah. Um, C O M. Okay. R A D E S Coach. It's a running. Yeah. Lindsay Perry. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things with coaches is a lot of people don't want to be coached. They want to have the end result. <clears throat> so even if they're in sports, most people don't want to be bossed. So knowing that, calling yourself a coach tends to do poorly unless you're calling yourself a coach like coaches, coaches of America and you're collecting coaches in your audience. So unless you are wearing the bumper sticker for your coaches, most people want to have that end result. So like I love soccer, not I want to be coached in soccer. The person who loves an obsessive soccer, they want to be seen as the coach, not be publicly coached. So unless you are a celebrity figure, then you can, of course, you can pivot as you grow. So if you're, once you're bigger, you can definitely pivot into that role, but know that when you're beginning, you tend to attract more people if you're, I love soccer, um, I love running, running, runaholics, somebody run a, like addicted to running, um, not addicted to running, but you know those runners that can't stop running, they have to run every morning or they kind of freak out because they haven't had their run yet. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably who you want as your target audience. They're passionate about running. 
um, I'm assuming just by this initial glance at you. So what would you say about that person who needs that runner's high, that runner's when you're jogging and you feel that after effect of your run? Okay, so what would they call themselves in that state? That's what I would call your page. Because here you've got 100K kilometer race. That's the gung-ho, bonko crazy athletic person. So what would that crazy athletic triathlons, um, I've done a triathlon. Because you've got running up here and you've got biking 100 kilometers, that's a I've done triathlons. What can you say the person that I've done a triathlon? That doesn't mean you're all the people that are liking your page are people who have done a triathlon, but you're attracting the person who wants to do a triathlon so they can say, I've done a triathlon. So you attract them in that next state. Here we go. Yeah. So hopefully that helps. I love that you've got lives. Um, love to see content a little. Oh, no, you've got content consistent. This one said February 25th, so I was just checking. Um, you've got consistent content. Um, Are you finding that Facebook is favoring live video right now, or is it kind of? Or they used to a lot more. Mm -hmm. yeah, last, oh, last spring, live videos were going bonkers. Um, the year before live video, if you were doing live video, like Facebook would put a lot of behind it. Right now, live video is a lot more like regular video content. If you can get comments on your video, if you can get comments on any video, you get to grow. So it's more about the comments and the engagement because everyone's doing lives now. It's not as, not as effective as it used to be. So good news is he's having 4,000 views for his 14,000 page. So your, your engagement's pretty solid. I would add Messenger chat to this. So if they comment, they get extra tips over Messenger. So you can grow your list at the same time. Cool. OK, guys. Yes, well, yeah, in the live. Do you want to come up oh. here? No. Um, you, use the, the ball then. Yeah. Uh, Cat box. My, my question was, you were talking about the messenger bots blocking content. Blocking and content. Blocking, like on mobile? Oh, yeah, oh, when yeah. it overtakes your page, so, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused. Do, don't. I do messenger all the time. So here's a way that I do Messenger. So here's my page, Moolah Marketer. Uh, click. Um. There we go. OK, so inside of my settings, I can turn on the auto pop messaging. So here's settings. And you can go over to the left and Messenger platform and Messenger reviews. I can set on my settings right here where I can turn it on, where responses are automated, and I can turn on the fact what I say in response to people. So I can say, hey, are you a Facebook marketer? Or are you a small business? That's a way that I can get them to talk about themselves. I don't do anything because I don't want them, to, I don't want anything taken away from my mobile um, experience. I don't want something popping up on my page whenever they come over. I want them to get content right away so I get their likes. That's important for me, but if your goal is not the engagement right now, your goal is more leads. Like, I'm in a different stage right after my launch. So starting in June, you're going to see a different page because I'm gearing up for my next launch that's happening in June. I sell only two times a year, and I sell in June again. And so May to June, my page is going to be buy, get ready to buy, get ready to buy. So it's going to be different content then. In July, you're going to see the Messenger chat pop up. Why? I want your leads. I don't care whether you're consuming my content because you consuming it now doesn't do any good for me. I'm not selling to you for six months because I'm busy helping my current customers have great results. So right now, I don't care about the reach on my page in July because in July, I'm, I'm I, so I'll put that up there because I care more about leads then. That person that will be my next buyer if I open the wait list or something. Okay, so this is where you'd turn it on. Down here, you'd have your apps, you'd set up, I like ManyChat, that's my favorite. Um, you could use Chat Fuel. There's a couple other ones. I think Mobile Monkey was um, one too. I maybe I got the name wrong, but anyways, there's a bunch of different apps you can use. I prefer ManyChat, um, and then you can go down here and you can add your Messenger link so people can get into your Messenger right away. So I can give this to people inside of my group, and then I can get them onto my Messenger list. I can also right here is where you want to get subscription messaging and get approved, so you can send messages outside of that 24 plus one. Did, will you get banned if you do outside the 24 plus one? Not consistently. So some pages I see not getting banned um, from Messenger. But like someone in our audience has said, hey, wait, somebody I know got banned. Yes, if you abuse it and you don't have the subscription Messenger allowed, you can actually get Messenger removed from your page, the ability for your page to message people removed. Um, that's if you abuse the system. 
Facebook tells us what they want, we follow their rules, we're okay. So how does Messenger work? I like to, oh, I don't have it logged in where you can log into my Messenger. Guys, this is on DM's computer, and like I don't even remember all my passwords anymore because I have to like log into my one path. So I'm not gonna like log into ManyChat to show you, but I'm gonna show you one of my posts so you can see how I use Messenger and how I collect leads um, on my page. So right here is a post, seven things that will get your account disabled. Um, we wrote this after a very well-known marketer got his page disabled, and I wanted to let people know that it doesn't have to happen to you if you follow the rules. And here's the rules. So I tell you, ah, sheesh, guys. Sorry, let's hope that they don't like pop up. Okay, let us know, and I will get back with you with the things that you can do. So I'm telling them, I'm disclosing to them that if they comment below, I will get back to you. And then if they comment, I've had 234 comments. That's 234 leads I got on my list. Mm -hmm. um, if they comment, I respond to them on my, as my page. So you can see here the response of my page. Okay, here it is. Hey, you've, here's all the messenger. She's on my messenger right now. You can see all the times that my, my page responded to her. She's on there, she's engaging messenger on my content. So my page, I don't know which one came in here that she came on, in on. She seems pretty active in my messenger. Um, so you can see here, here, Emily Chappelle in my audience. She engaged on my content, so you can see up here. Hey, I was supposed to get the notes. Sweet, I'll send them to you. If you ever want something, just unsubscribe, just say stop. And then here's the notes from the content. It's sent to her automatically over. And then the, if she wants more, she can click and say, I need more, I wanna know more. And she gets further content from my must button. Okay, guys, any more questions about page growing leads or anything else? No, I think we're good. Okay, um, if you guys have questions, I'm on Facebook and here's my, um, I'm on Facebook as Rachel Silla Miller and then my Facebook page, Moolah Marketer, and I have a free Facebook group where people geek out about Facebook and I've got coaches in there if I'm not there to help answer your questions. So yeah, and of course the DM lab, um, Hopefully Justina will remember to will. tag me because yep. I don't always get over to all the places I am. Um, you guys can imagine my notifications are a little insane, but you'll tag me and I'll help you guys. It, we do have a page audit. So I want you guys to optimize your pages, get with your buddy, connect with your buddy, make sure your page is optimized. And then in 10 days time, tomorrow, is it Thursday, we're Thursday. gonna do a Q and A or something. Mm -hmm. And then in 10 days time, we're gonna look at your pages and make sure that your converting and you've got them optimized. So I would love for those of you who've never started a page to get that page up and running right now. Perfect. Awesome. All right, can we get a round of applause for Rachel? <laughs> Thank you guys. So awesome. <laughs> seen, in the, seen in the chat most of the day, mind blown, holy crap, this is amazing. So that was really, really great. Thank you so, so much. So glad this was helpful, guys. <laughs> and yeah, talk to you guys later. All right, so just to recap, thank you so, so much for watching today. Uh, this recording will be up in lab within the next 24 hours or so. Um, we do have a follow-up Q&A call with Rachel. That's this coming Thursday, the 21st, and that's at 1 p.m. Central Time. That will be in, in lab. It will also be recorded and available within 24 hours, and that call is an hour, so it won't be all day. But if you, as you are going through and implementing, building your pages, and you find that you have questions, that's a great place to bring them uh, to our Q&A call. But you can also jump in the Facebook group. It's Elite Commons, and post questions there throughout the execution cycle. And then um, we will be asking you for your page submissions in about a week. You'll get an email and I'll also post in the Elite Commons group when you can submit your page for review. And we'll have our Elite Critique on Thursday the 28th. That's also an hour long call at 1 p.m. Central with Rachel. If you have any questions, please let us know. We're happy to help you. And uh, we're really looking forward to seeing you in the group. And best of luck with your pages. Thanks everyone. <laughs>